I mean, there is a showmanship, there is a sales tactic to all this, right? Like if you have the best 90th page on the planet, it makes no sense to have the best third act if you can't get there. So you're judging a competition. So what I like to ask, I'm an aspiring screenwriter myself. As a screenwriter, I would love to ask you when you first look at a screenplay, when you first open it up, get to that first page, can you make a determination based on the first page if this is something that you think you want to continue reading? Is this going to be a good script? Or do you actually give it time and like read the first few pages? Because I've heard like you can tell on the first page if it's worth reading or not. So I'd love yeah. to get your thoughts on that. There, there are a couple of things. One, the understanding for like for most competitions, like and for most studio executives, most producers like myself, like we're reading like it's no joke, like we're reading a ton like, of script, right? like you know four or five screenplays a day at the very least right and on the weekends when we actually get to this because we're we have full jobs like i this week i haven't been able to read a single screenplay because i'm literally on set traveling from set and so the weekends are where i sit down and i read a stack or it used to be a yeah. stack now it's pdf files and so yeah i mean we read a lot and so it's because of that just from a practical standpoint from a you know from a sales standpoint it's very very important within the first you know 10 pages to really grab you know, that executive, because there's the, they're going to be the ones that are pushing your script forward. I mean, there is a showmanship, there is a sales tactic to all this, right? Like if you have the best 90th page on the planet, it makes no sense you know, to have the best third act if you can't get there, right? And so immediately within, and I always read, like, I can tell within, a, you know, three pages, whether it's going to be something I like, or whether it's a professional screenwriter, I, you know, I always give a screenplay, I, I use the 4010 rule, which is no matter what screenplay I read, you know, even if it's bad, just because I owe it to the writer, they take the time to send something to me, I'm going to take the time to read it, you know, first 40 pages, last 10. So at least I have an understanding of what I'm talking about. That's only if it's terrible screenplay. That being said, like, I can usually tell within page one, like whether it's somebody that knows how to write and is writing professionally, or whether it's a, you know, a, how should I say first or second screenplay that, you know, obviously, like, Anybody that anybody that puts pen to paper or that types, you know, any sort of screenplay should be commended. But you can tell the people that have done it, that have sold screenplays that are, you know, mastering their craft versus, you know, the more amateurish attempts. And so to break it down from a structural level and from just what's on the page, the great writers like there's a lot of white space. And I know that's a cliche, but less is more. They have an ability to succinctly you know, describe both situations and action in a very, very succinct way that, you know, both captures you yet, you know, gives you the freedom in your mind to, to like, let your imagination run with it. Cause your intent is not necessarily to describe everything. Your intent is to grab either the studio executive, the director, the producer, like let their imagination start running off. Cause we're all making our own movies in our heads. Yeah. So, you know, the more succinct you can be in your descriptions while being vivid is fantastic. And secondly, there's always with great screenplays, there's always a moment or a scene that grabs you. And it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be like a giant action beat. It doesn't have to be, you know, Daniel Craig in Casino Royale, which ironically is is one of my favorite screenplays, but it has, it's written by Purvis and Wade and they, because they're Purvis and Wade, will literally write blocks that thick of right. action and they can because they're professionals and they've earned that right to do so Definitely. but like it doesn't have to be an action beat it doesn't have to be something that like blows you away but it has to be something that grabs your attention look at what i would argue one of the biggest one of the best opening scenes of all time is the social network and yeah. it's just a boy on a date with a girl and they're having this war of words that completely grabs you um and it's just about getting into social clubs so yeah. it's incredibly important i would argue that your first 10 pages are arguably the most important from a practical standpoint of making it in hollywood absolutely i, I appreciate that like you said some i'm taking notes by the way so don't mind me if you see me like no um, please, please, please i appreciate you saying like you commend anyone who puts pen to paper you know that's nice to hear like you have that respect for anyone who's gonna at least even try to start learning and, and go about this craft but you said, okay, so you said this is one of these things that sometimes it's hard, like when you're first learning about screenwriting, um, it's very hard sometimes to kind of determine when you say white space, when you say mm -hmm. like less is more, I don't know if you can maybe go into like a little bit more about what exactly do you mean by less is more and, and like white space. And then also, what do you think, like, you hear this cliche all the time, less is more, right? Which it's yeah. true. Like, you hear people say that, but 
does, do you think it's okay for writers to put like emotional descriptions in their scripts? Or do you think it really is? Cause you said too, you want the producer, you want them to make the movie in their own minds. Yeah. What do you think are some of those few like rules of thumbs of what you can or can't or should or shouldn't? I mean, there's not, you know, there's no like right or wrong really, but I'm sure they're really th- like coming from producer. There's gotta be things that the moment you see that you're like, Oh no. Okay. This is kind of a turn off for me. Yeah. 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 I mean like, look, it- there, there's first and foremost, there's no right way to do anything. There's no, there's no set of rules that like, I'm, I'm not like when people do something interesting on a script page, like that's unusual. Like they'll put text in color or they'll, you know, like do a different type of page or they'll put a picture in there for like, that's, that's all well and good. And it's great for making a statement and it's cool. And it like obviously separates itself from the pack. We have to learn, you have to learn the basic rules first. Like if you're, if your slug lines and your log, if your slug lines aren't correct, or the format isn't correct, we're going to know, you know, certain people try and jam more space in there. Certain people like to, you know, experiment with that. Like you need to be able to master the basics before you can start experimenting. Like the great screenwriters, like I, I, I follow, you know, uh, script notes and I love Craig Mays and I think he's great. Like he'll always tell you that there's no right way to do anything. And he's right, but he's also professional and he's mastered the basics. And so now he gets to experiment with the form. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, you do need to like, when you're first starting out, you do need to understand like how to write a basic screenplay like traditionally right now when i say white space i say that like i say white space in terms of a fast read right the more description you put the more we are we glaze over and we go oh this is going to take a long time to read and granted like yeah it's like that's our job so you can approach it with that attitude but it's also like it's your job to to make it a pleasant experience for the reader right and so i learn more like in terms of like emotionality and the action like you got to describe it visually you can't just say he's nervous you can't just say his heart rate is elevated like you can literally just say you know you know he fidgets in a seat beating sweat and that's really like all you need to lead into dialogue if he's nervous you know like you don't need to you don't need to describe how sweat is like pouring down his like chest and soaking his clothes and all that stuff like less is more create like these these short visual images like one of the best writers that can do this is like you know like chris barling who wrote like films like uh like uh, buried and greenland and uh, a couple other films that i love like he'll literally he'll have like one sentence and then like it, his screenplays will take 20 minutes to read because it's just it's little beats moments visual images that give you such a set picture. Yeah. definitely gonna download some of his scripts for sure yeah no he he writes he writes incredibly fast and so but then again awesome. like there's also there's the you know eric roth will write you know just massive amounts of action describing every single thing but he's also eric roth and he's executed again and again and again and he gets to do what he wants yeah for you know sure. and so, so I- then, yeah, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Like, I, I love it. This is re- really good stuff. You know, you hear a lot of different opinions on this stuff. And mm-hmm. but you're, you're coming from someone who is reading a ton of scripts. I think you're the best person really to talk about this stuff, like what really we should be, you know, tr- aiming at. Um, so do you think it, there's ever, and, and I only bring this up because I just got into like this argument with a friend, like uh, another person pursuing screenwriting, but do you think there's ever really um, in a script, do you think it's ever, especially for when you're first starting out, like I'm just going to cold email my script or whatever to Mm -hmm. some of the people that I've been connecting with. Do you think I should just stay away from putting in emotions that characters are are feeling? You think it's just better to stay away from saying like, you know, and then he sadly nervously, like you said, or then he felt, or like he felt this way or even things like, um, inserting kind of what the character might be thinking because there's some amazing scripts from professionals that i've read where they do that but then i'm like yeah but they're professional like they- well i mean yeah, yeah you know but it, it, i i completely agree and yes professionals get to do that it's just i would argue like we can't like the whole point about a visual medium is that we can't see inside their head so why does the writer get to cheat and do so like for example like sadly right sh- you write shoulders drooped right hunched over like you know just he like you know, just hangs like there has to be a visual way to extrapolate these emotions. You know, you got to like leave leave the feelings to the actor, leave it to the dialogue. You know, That's like awesome. instead of instead of like you know saying like oh he he sadly strolled down the street, you know, and like he, he, talking to his friend, it's really like his friends like hey what's you know what's going on? No oh, nothing. You know, and like you make it like about like him avoiding any sort of conversation and dialogue, and you get a sense that he's sad. You're supposed to like imply. You're not supposed to tell. That's you know, know, that, and again, that that's this okay. like if I hear show don't tell, like I'm gonna punch somebody in the face. I know that's a cliche, <laughs> but like it's it's yes, you can say he feels sad to you know help 
accentuate your point but if you're doing that it means you're not hitting the point hard enough either in your dialogue or your visual descriptions and you need to push it along is my personal opinion i really like that like that that should be, instead of being show don't tell it should be imply don't tell that would yeah. makes way more sense honestly um okay so we have like a few more minutes one last question which i think i always like to get so coming from someone who you're a producer you read a bunch of scripts i'm sure you get emails of like first time screenwriters or like you know yeah. a, like a screenplay what what is kind of like any advice or any any advice or any tips that you you would give someone who's getting to that stage where they're ready to start getting their work out there they're ready to start networking like you know whatever yeah. that means like what are some a little bit of advice that you would give um first and foremost and this is going to suck for a lot of people because they don't have the ability to do so if you have the ability to do so i always recommend moving to la um and the reason why is and of course like we're in you can write anywhere and we're in a zoom world right now in which everything you know happens and we can take meetings and i don't think we're ever going to go back to like me inviting a writer to beverly hills to like hang out and all that stuff i think we're always going to do it via zoom but if you're young and you have the ability to the reason why i say move to la is because you're in an environment especially now that we're leaving COVID and people are actually going outside again you're in an environment with other like-minded professionals and other like-minded people that are just as you know kind of you know I guess like aggressive and just like as ambitious as you are and all of the friends that I made I started as a background actor I started as an extra right and I moved here just to get close to the industry in any way that I could all of my friends that I met doing background and going to bars on the weekend and just making friend groups where I would slip my because I write too I slip my screenplays here I make connections there that's how you network is you make friends here and then you never know when like one of your friends is going to become a writer's assistant on like you know justified like one of my friends did and now he like runs the damn show and like you can get go to him for advice or go to him for help you know one of my friends is you know a very accomplished writer right now so I can go to him for help like I made a lot of friends that became agents and managers and that really like helped and so it takes some time you're not going to get off the bus and all of a sudden sell your screenplay but it does help you know kind of solidify a network that you can eventually utilize now everyone's not in that situation right there might be a 45 year old that has a crisis of conscience has three kids and like can't move out of iowa right to which case i would say like you know in a weird way there are so many you know, there are so many outlets in which you can, you can create a network, right? There's so many, like on Twitter, there's so many different accounts that like, you know, screen, like there's screencraft, there's we screenplay, there's, you know, like, uh, there's script pipeline. There's so many like Twitter handles and everything where you can meet an online community where you can actually start sharing your screenplay. But the biggest thing that I would say is network on either it's an online community or in LA, it's starting networking with like-minded folks that, you know, you create your own, uh, a group of friends with because eventually someone's going to have an in that you might actually be able to help and in terms of like actually getting it to studios it's a bit it's a bit tough because there is a there is kind of a cash 22 at a studio right like i'm not supposed to read unsolicited submissions that being said like if it comes across my inbox i can't stop from reading it in which case like for the lucky few that manage to get eyes on and every now and again like i i will say like i get an unsolicited submission that i would be like oh okay, well, let me, and then I would actually literally go to my people and make them sign an NDA. And to get to that point, what you need to have is a hell of a concept and a log line that you can put in a succinct email. I don't care. Like I, I'm sure, I don't care. Like, I'm sure there's an amazing backstory for every writer. Hey, I'm, I'm in Idaho. Here's my life story. Like blah, blah, blah. That's awesome. And creating a personality. Like I, it's awesome. I don't care. Um, I, I care for the person all the time, right? I mean, it's like every, yeah, you know, and it's, and I say, I don't care, like not trying to be an asshole. I say, I don't care is that that like, that's not what's going to compel me to read a screenplay. Yeah. You know, what's going to read a screenplay is like, if it's a concept I haven't heard of before, like if the log line would have, if the log line would have been like, you know, these like the log line to inception, like, right. Where it's like these people like, you know, enter dreams in order to like, you know, blah 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 break up a company i actually can't even describe log line of inception in sentence but you can tell immediately from the concept like here's here's my idea it's you know and here's here's where here's where another cliche comes in it's 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 die hard on a bus right it's the it's the basic speed thing if i hear that and i hear a log line like yeah it's cheap yeah it's it's cliche but it works you said so there's a lot out of that with the networking thing it just seems like be genuine like you're making friends you're not using people to try to get ahead right like that's what i got and then for the logline thing, it's interesting. That's it's always so tricky. Like, what do you put in an email? It's really hard to know. But so from what you just said, it's like you kind of do want to use the cliche of like this movie versus this movie, and then a logline. But 
do you have any tips on like what should be in a log line or what you should have at that beginning of that log line to, to grab people's there's attention? No, there's no like, there's no real like, you know, there's no real trick towards it. Like you read the long line regardless. And like, it really just comes down to what the concept is. If you're having a hard time figuring out your log line, I, I would suggest writing a different script because you don't know what your story is. Frankly, like that's really what it is. Like, you know, for example, like I, this one, like, let's, I'm not going to say what the screenplay was, but like, let's, let's use this for an example. I got an unsolicited submission where it said, hello, Cindy, you know, like, I understand you get these hundred, a hundred thousand times. This is my only way in. I'm taking my shot. It's again, die hard on a bus. Here's the log line. It's a high concept, very commercial. If this is what you're looking for, like I can send you my screenplay. You know, and I would actually suggest putting the screenplay in there, not sending. Uh, I was about saying, to ask you. Yeah, not saying I was saying my screenplay because we're never going to respond. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's a good tip. I mean, it's good to know. Like, well, one and again, yeah, yeah, all this is under the guise that I'm not supposed to read unsolicited submissions. So yeah. what I have to do then is I have to literally get my company to, you know, require an NDA and I have to get them to sign an NDA and all that jazz just to make sure that I can see it so I don't get sued. Because what if I read a script and then I don't like it, but then a year later... I read the same script with the same log line and it's a different writer and I had nothing, it had nothing to do with that. Then they have cause to sue. Right. Yeah. That's another thing that you guys should know. Ideas aren't, ideas aren't copyrighted. So like if you're working on a high concept thing, I guarantee you there's 20 other people working on it as well. So you gotta, gotta, gotta move on, strike while the iron's hot. No, that's, it's good to know. Like it can happen. You know, it can happen that there are pe people saw that, that do, if, if that email does catch your attention, you do have that slim chance. So you better make it, really good so okay i like to end like this is just one last kind of fun question so i really just like I, li I like to get everyone's thoughts on this but what are what are your and this is a question you can go anywhere with it it's very broad but i'm curious like what are your thoughts right now on the state of this industry theaters cinema streaming are you a pro like do you are you like one of these people I who thinks streaming is the best thing to ever happen or are you like I, we need more theaters back. I just like to get I mean, everyone. It's, it's they're, they're not mutually exclusive. I think there's, there's plenty of room at the table for everybody. I just think like, as to, as to our theaters going away. No, that's ridiculous. I, I happen to think that people panicked in the middle of COVID. They thought that this was going to be the way that, that things were going to be forever. Everyone steered too far into the skid and went all in on streaming for some reason, because there was a world in which they thought we were always going to be this way like you know people are never going to go back to the theaters that's ridiculous what are people yeah. going to want to do after being inside for two and a half years they're going to want to go outside in any way shape and form it's ridiculous to think that the theatrical experience is over will it change absolutely because guess what now like a lot of people are losing their jobs we're going to go into a recession inflation's hyper you know out of control so people are a lot more picky in which they go into the theaters right you have to literally give people a theatrical experience now, what is the theatrical experience? I don't quite know. You know, I mean, everything, everywhere, all at once. I tried to buy that movie and people told me no one's ever going to see a 60 year old Asian superhero. And I disagreed. Yeah. Right. And that, that didn't make money. So yeah. like people are hyper picky in which they go back to the theaters. And I think it's going to stay that way for quite some time. I think things naturally ebb and flow. Conversely, like, I don't understand why, why you'd want to see a $200 million action movie like The Gray Man on streaming. I mean, I understand yeah. you get like, it, to me, it doesn't make much sense. You know, I understand that like, I want to see those types of films on a big screen. I don't yeah, want to see them on a small screen. Like Prey. That's a good example too. I tried watching that movie on Netflix and I was like, ugh, I don't know. It's not you really can't, like, like I, I saw Prey last night, which was phenomenal. And I don't understand why it had to be on Hulu. That yeah. movie I would absolutely see in a theater. Like it was amazing. It was, and you could tell it was shot for theatrical, right? Yeah. So all that is to say, like <laughs> the best part about streaming too, is that streaming is, is a way to get to like, I can, it's a way to get to niche audiences. Right. Yeah. You can make like a lot like you can make a lot more smaller films that would never get a theatrical release that would never actually get made that would find an audience. Yeah. Right. So I think that there's definitely room at the table for everybody. But the concept that like we're not going to go back to theaters, that's ridiculous. You want to know why 17 year olds are always going to want to go on a date. And there was one prolific producer that <laughs> will remain nameless that that gave me this. And this is not my story, but gave me this 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 anecdote. And he's like he told me, he's like, Cindy, you know, like people are always want to get laid. <laughs> and so there's always going to be a movie theater business and it. that's very crude it's uh, very inappropriate but the fact of the matter is is people are always going to want to go out and have a good time and then collectively it's better to experience those events in a theater with a collective conscience we are social creatures we are not solitary creatures i would argue cost aside every single person would rather see a movie with a group full of people than alone 
100 percent. No. i love it that's a beautiful way to to end this but i'll shoot you an email just you know let me know when you have some more time in a couple months or whatever i'd love to uh connect and just keep the conversation going awesome talk to you soon thank you great bye <laughs>